My name is Morgan Stout and I'm the Outreach and Education Manager here at the Bladder Cancer Advocacy Network. Maintenance therapy is a treatment of cancer with medication, typically following an initial round of treatment. Maintenance treatment may include chemotherapy, hormonal therapy, or targeted therapy. Maintenance therapy is used to prevent or delay the cancer's return if the cancer is in complete remission after the initial treatment. Complete remission means that the doctors cannot find any cancer and you have no symptoms. To slow the growth of advanced cancer after initial treatment, this is another use of maintenance therapy. This can help shrink the cancer, which is called partial remission. In this situation, maintenance therapy is not used to cure the cancer, but it can lengthen a person's life. You can have maintenance therapy for a long time in either of these situations. We're delighted to have two leading experts with us today from the University of Washington in Seattle, urologist Dr. Jonathan Wright and medical oncologist Dr. Petros Grievous. I'm also joined today by two patient advocates, Joseph King and Gail Dykstra, who you will meet after the doctor's presentations. They will share their experiences with their maintenance therapies. I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Wright now. Thank you very much, Morgan, appreciate it. And thanks so much for Beacon for putting this together. So I'm gonna talk about maintenance therapy for non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. So as Morgan mentioned, it's important to know the distinction between what we call induction uh, therapy for bladder cancer, non-muscle invasive and maintenance intravesical therapy. Induction therapy for non-muscle invasive bladder cancer is weekly installations for six weeks following the primary resection of the bladder tumor. And then the maintenance therapy is given to help keep the cancer from coming back after it has disappeared following the initial induction therapy. So after we look back in, we see no evidence of recurrence after completing the six week induction treatment. We then talk about doing maintenance therapy afterwards to help prevent the risk of recurrence. Because certainly we know that with non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, recurrences are quite common. This is a schedule that is put together by Beacon. You can download this on their website. Uh, it is an outstanding uh, layout for what most of us do for maintenance therapy. You can actually print it out, cut this part out from, their, from the sheet um, and take it to your doctor uh, if you're receiving maintenance therapy. And it nicely kind of walks through, and I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes just walking through the general principle of it. So again, here is the, the, uh, the induction BCG done for six weeks. And then you have at about the three month point, they call it about six to eight weeks after finishing these six weeks, six weeks and six weeks makes three months, you have the cystoscopy done. Assuming that's negative, the maintenance program starts in. Typically within a couple, within a week or so, or up to three weeks of having the cystoscopy, you'll get three weekly treatments. So the next three weeks of the first round of maintenance. Then about three months later, you have your next cystoscopy done. And then the second round of maintenance starts again in three weekly installations. At this point, we then transition to getting the, the BCG maintenance on a six month schedule typically. So for patients that are getting cystoscopies every three months, they'll start having a cystoscopy that doesn't follow, isn't followed with maintenance, and then a cystoscopy that is followed with maintenance. And you can see this continuing out, cystoscopy three months later, a cysto, maintenance BCG, a cysto, another cysto three months later, and typically the goal of continuing it out to about three years of maintenance BCG, each time with three weeks. Again, these are two of the authors that put this together along with Beacon. And I think it's important to recognize that we do modify the schedule based on your individual needs. And I'm gonna come back to that concept later on as this is a guide for what we do for patients. So who with non-muscle invasive bladder cancer needs maintenance therapy? Not all patients with non-muscle invasive disease need maintenance therapy. 
we try to put uh, people into a different risk category, which then drives whether or not they get maintenance therapy. So a low risk individual is one that has a low grade tumor. It's TA, it's non-invasive, it's single and it's small, less than two or three centimeters. This is a low risk individual as far as non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. These patients need neither induction nor maintenance therapy. Intermediate risk group, they're still low grade and TA tumors, non-invasive, but in this time they have multiple tumors, more than, more than one, and a larger tumor. It can also be recurrent tumors. Uh, and in some cases we consider small high grade TAs in this group too, but this is the general uh, intermediate risk category. These patients may receive maintenance therapy. And I say may receive because the data are not quite as strong as, as those in the higher risk, but a lot of us will give up to a year of maintenance in this setting. And then finally, the high risk, where we're gonna focus most of this discussion, those are patients with non-muscle invasive bladder cancer that are high grade, could be TA, or it could be high grade T1, or have carcinoma in situ two present as well. There are other uh, nuances to becoming high risk too, but in general, I'm keeping with a more simpler uh, stratification. And in this case, it's recommended that we do maintenance therapy for the higher risk patients after receiving induction therapy. And we do this because maintenance BCG improves outcomes. Those that receive maintenance compared to those that receive induction alone are more likely to be free from recurrence at five years. And there have been a couple of studies that have shown this. And I just show one, what we call recurrence curve uh, that shows in the top line, those that got maintenance and the bottom line, those that didn't get maintenance. So how this graph works, everyone starts out here at time zero, so months are on the bottom, two years, four years, six years, everyone starts out without a recurrence. And then over time, people have a recurrence and the curve drops down. So if we look at the five-year point in this US study, the SWOG study, looking at BCG induction versus BCG induction plus maintenance, at the five-year point, those that received only induction about 60% had had a recurrence, as opposed to those that receive maintenance, only 40% had had a recurrence. So a significant improvement in remaining free from recurrence if you received maintenance therapy. But again, we have to highlight that recurrences are common in this setting, and we need to then treat that recurrence and adjust our plan after that. So what do the guidelines say? And I think we really try to follow guideline care when we're taking care of our patients. And you can look up these guidelines as well. If we take and look at high risk non-muscle invasive bladder cancer patients, and we look at the American Urologic Association, the AUA, they teamed up with the Society of Urologic Oncology, the SUO, and in their guideline, in a high risk patient who completely responds to induction BCG, first cystoscopy, no tumor, a clinician should continue maintenance BCG for three years as tolerated. We'll talk about that too. How about the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, the NCCN, with their comments on maintenance intravesical BCG? Ideally, maintenance should be given for one year for intermediate risk and three years for high risk non-muscle basic bladder cancer. Again, with the caveat, ideally, because there are nuances to this. I will say I do sit on this panel for full disclosure. And the European Urology Association, in high-risk tumors, full-dose intravesical BCG for one to three years with the three weekly installations, as I showed, is indicated. They have added an additional comment here that I think is timely, considering the BCG shortage that we've been dealing with over the, the last several years, that the additional benefit of the second and third years should be weighted against costs side effects and problems connected with the BCG shortage. An ongoing dialogue with your urologist uh, on the various aspects of it, depending on what is available to you. 
And so I, I highlight this because not everybody can finish all of the three years of treatment because of the side effects. BCG does cause significant local bladder side effects and can cause systemic side effects as well too. Uh, it's rare to have really severe side effects, uh, but the bothersome ones that can really impact a patient's quality of life do, uh, op do sometimes lead to us stopping. People often ask me, well, how many patients can't finish it? If we look at these three large randomized controlled trials, and you can see one was published 20 years ago, one 10 years ago, and one about seven or eight years ago, the percentage stopping due to side effects in this older study, about almost 30% stopped due to side effects. More recent studies, 19%, and the most recent one, only 9% stopped due to side effects. Why the decline? Maybe part of it is that the original earlier study used a different strain of BCG. Potentially this one caused a lot more uh, side effects being, uh, being felt by patients that ne necessitated stopping. The TICE is what we are using uh, now today in the United States is, our, is what we have available. So potentially we're doing, a, it has fewer side effects. People can tolerate it better. Why an improvement over this? I'm not sure. I think probably the answer is somewhere between, you know, eight to 20% of patients have to stop due to side effects. What can be done to help with these side effects? Again, this is a discussion with your urologist about things. Commonly we'll use as bladder medications, anticholinergics to stop bladder spasms, peridium to help with burning. We might give Tylenol for the systemic aches or, or low grade fevers. There are data that a quinolone antibiotic, which is a Cipro or a levofloxacin. Uh, the study was actually done with ofloxacin showing that it helped to reduce the side effects of BCG without impacting the efficacy of BCG. Remember BCG is a, we're giving you a bacteria in your bladder and these quinolone class do have some anti-tuberculosis uh, uh, aspects to them. So this has been shown to help again, improve the side effects without negatively impacting the efficacy. And then we can reduce the BCG dose as well too. You can cut the dose in half and go to a third if you're having significant side effects needing to reduce it. Something else to talk about with your, with your physician. So I, I really want to come back to this point is that maintenance is a schedule is a guide. It's not rigid. Again, most of us use this protocol, which is the SWOG protocol. There are other protocols as well. They have not been compared head to head. So if your urologist is doing a slightly different one, that does not mean it's wrong at all. It's just different. And there are just different ways to do this. Sometimes you have to delay a dose. You know, if you're coming in and you pee and there's blood that we see in your urine, uh, not microscopic, but that we, your blood, your urine looks red, we're not going to give treatment that day. You're going to have to skip a treatment. If your urinalysis is suspicious for a bladder infection, we're not going to give the treatment. We're going to delay that dose. And I put here, you take a trip, right? This is mapped out for the next two, six, three years of your life. You know, sometimes you got a trip plan or a wedding or an anniversary, you know, and it's okay to, to modify and, and skip a treatment or delay it a week. It's, it, it's okay to do so. Um, and then if you have a buy, if we see something on one of these cystoscopies over the three years, we're going to take you back to the operating room to do a biopsy. And so that, and then as you, those of you who've been treated, you have to wait a few weeks after the biopsy before we're going to put the BCG in. So it's going to shift this around and that is okay. So what are my conclusions for high risk, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer guidelines show us improved freedom from recurrence if we receive maintenance. Most of us use this three-year SWOG protocol given every three, three weeks, every three to six months out to three years. Not everybody can complete the fully three years. That is okay. We try to do it, but not everyone can. It's okay to be flexible with the schedule. It's not rigid. Um, and just keep an open dialogue with your urologist on how you're doing and what's going on. I think that's so important for every aspect of our care. So with that, I'll turn it over for, uh, for the next talk, but thank you so much for allowing me to be here with you today.